welcome to All for United WFC. Hello and welcome to All for United with me, John Foster, MUFC. Uh, another positive show tonight. If you uh, miss Mondays, we uh, concentrated on our captain. Um, and throughout the summer, we'll be talking about a big chunk of our players, but we felt it was the right thing to do to start with the captain. Uh, but with it being a Thursday <laughs> night show, we've um, got to go straight to our manager. So we've got four people here, me and myself included, uh, as a massive Skinner fan. Um, you know, we're very public in, in our opinions on that as well. And we want to kind of share a few, a few memories and um, talk about the reasons why we like him and why we think a lot of him as a person and as a football coach, football manager as well. So uh, before we get into all that, uh, let's just say hello to everybody. Uh, Connor, um, welcome back to the show. How are you doing? Yeah, good. Looking forward to this. Another another positive one. As you said, we've got a few few of these lined up. Captain, now the manager. Was, uh, looking forward to this one. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Benny, uh, good to see you, mate. How are you doing? I'm really well, John. How are you, pal? Yeah, not too bad, thank you. I had a couple of days off work, so I think it's maybe more tired, to be honest. That's usually the way, but um, back to work uh, Friday and Saturday, then got the, uh, the Sunday off. Not that there's a very night of women anymore, so it's going to be a bit unusual, but we'll get used to that. It just made me think, how did we survive the 18 months without football, when we were already struggling the first couple of weeks in, but it is what it is. You do get used to it. Um, Mark, nice of you to join us, mate. How are you doing? Yeah, not bad, thanks, John. Enjoying the sun while we get it. And then, obviously, next week it'll be pouring down with rain and we'll all be complaining. But right now, loving it, yeah. Yeah, nice one. Yeah, thank you for joining us, Mark. No um, plenty of people in the comments as well. Um, and, you know, the, the people who do appear in our comments, I think they have been speaking very highly of um, Skinner in the, you know, in the last few few months, really, along the past few weeks. And um, same on Monday, you know, we had quite a lot of positivity in the comments, which is also good to see. Um, so let's just make a little bit of a start then, because we want to talk a little bit in like quite a logical order. So I'll just start off um, talking a little bit about when he arrived. Uh, he started off where obviously he'd done a few, uh, a few interviews. Um, we noticed right away the fan base that uh, he was a lot more uh, talkative than Casey Stoney. I think there was, me personally, I think the polar opposite, you know, Casey's very much like a, a bit more stone faced and, you know, she was like, had to try and say the right thing, whereas Mark, he just opens up and he just says whatever he wants to say and does it his way. And that's my kind of first thoughts, uh, first thoughts of him. Um, and then obviously we went to uh, Glasgow and we met him for the first time. Um, so we just want to kind of start off with that one. So, um, Benny, let's just start off with yourself then, mate. Um, before we actually went to Glasgow, just before we actually met him, what were your like initial thoughts, uh, the way he was coming across to, to the fan base? Well, initially, I, I didn't know a lot about this uh, about the about, about the uh, the guy, you know. Um, so I was going up, I was going uh, over with a, a very open minded. I think I think the word, I think it's the correct way to to describe it, you know. Um, and I just thought, listen, he's, he's a brand new manager, you know, it, it, the biggest job of his life. Yes, fair enough, he's managed, uh, uh, you know, a couple of other clubs before, but. Listen, this is the biggest job he's probably likely to ever get in in, in his life, uh, and I just thought, listen, I'm going to go up and mine. I'm going to, um, I'm going to back him to the hill, uh, and we'll see exactly what he's going to be made of as the season goes through. But my initial thoughts were, well, let's just like, listen, let's go out there and support the support the girls the way that we always support the girls, and we'll get right behind the manager. And um, uh, in the early days, you know, I was a little bit uh, confused with all the baffle that he, would, he was talking about, red waves and stuff like that. And um, I was like, what's all this mumbo jumbo he's talking about here, you know? Uh, but uh, he's got that on his head a little bit now, you know. He started to talk like a proper Manchester United manager. Um, well, ben, Benny, just before we carry on, let's just touch on that a little bit because I think that kind of divided like the fan base a little bit because I, I didn't mind him saying that because I thought he was full of energy, you know, put a smile on my face, but I can see the other side of it where maybe he wanted something a bit more professional. Is that kind of like where, where you was? You, you just wanted to like a little bit more... You know, no, 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 no. I loved his enthusiasm, mate. I loved, I, I loved the enthusiasm. I loved the, uh, the way that he, he spoke about the job, you know. And they spoke about the team as well and the football club with, with enthusiasm and with, uh, you know, he always had a big smile on his face as well when he, when he spoke about either the team 
or, or the football club in general, um, or even his job. Um, but it's just some of the, yeah, I was, we just took a little bit and get used to all this sort of red wave stuff and all this other stuff that he used to come out with. I'm like, hey, what's going about here? In, um, but you know, um, I, I think he just grew into it, you know, as it got along. I think it, it might be more nervous speak as well. Maybe, maybe he's just trying to get everybody on side, you know, by using this sort of uh, this sort of language, shall we say, you know, this sort of like red wave, trying to get the fans all on side, trying to, you know, say, oh, listen, you're the you're the twelfth person. Uh, we we really need you, you know. Uh, and he always spoke very highly at the fans. Though. He always, in every you know, of every interview that he did, he always made a point of getting across to the fans. This is you're going to be important for this match, or you're going to be important for the season ahead. Or I'm going to need you to be as loud as you're going to be because we're playing X, Y, and Z, and we need to try and you know uh, create a bit of um, a hostile atmosphere, if, if if you like, you know, you know, try and you know make this team. That's coming to play against us all. If we're going across to play against them, you know, to try and knock them off their rhythm by trying to be as loud as boisterous as we can be, and to you know, and I always thought that was really good of him though, because yes, Casey always used to speak highly of us as well, but never to the extent that Mark's always uh, spoken about us, which was fresh and it's um, especially this day and age where football, you know, we had all that rubbish for the Super League in the men's side and. They're saying, oh, football's nothing without fans. But then the men's side of the game's gone back to exactly the same way as it was before then. TV TV, TV rules and, you know, uh, look at the cup final allocations for, for the Europa League final, the Champions League final. It's absolutely diabolical, you know. Uh, and fans are supposed to matter in football. So it was really, really refreshing to have a manager that was always that was looking and willing to engage with fans um as well as telling you about the side a little bit more whereas i think case was possibly a little bit more um so as you said stone face where she'd keep it to herself a little bit mark was uh willing to dive, divulge a little just a little bit more um whether it be injuries or whether it would be um how we how we envisioned that we play uh whether you know you know just just, just like I think he's a little bit more communicative. You know, he, he likes to get his point of view across as well. He likes to get his sort of his vision of the way that he wanted us to play, uh, uh, to play in, uh, and to eventually play if, if, if we're talking about right at the start like we are. Uh, I just think it's really, really refreshing in, in this day and age to have a manager that's willing to try and get the fans on the side where sometimes we're the forgotten about uh, people, if you like, in the world of football. We're, we're, we're the bottom of the barrel, if you like. You know what I mean? It's like... Um, especially in this day and age, to, to, to players, to management, to, 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 to football clubs, to, to TV companies, whatever it may be. Um, so it was refreshing to see that, listen, this guy this guy loves us, you know, that this guy wants our support. He, he wants us to be part of the uh, big picture going forward. It's not just him and his team or himself, you know, like we've had managers in the past at Manchester United, like uh, Jose Mourinho, it was all about him, 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 him. You know, um, this guy actually wants us to be all in it together and to move forward together and to celebrate success together. Uh, and also for any uh, disappointment to all bid it together, you know, we share that disappointment of not quite doing something, not quite achieving something. So it's really refreshing, mate, I think. Um, I agree. I think the word that you're after is uh, synergy. I think uh, when you start talking about that, that's the word that uh, Mark used, wasn't it? That the fans and the and the team working together. I've left that comment on screen by Ellie. It's something that maybe people don't don't see unless if you hit the ground. Uh, and he said, I spoke to him once after the game about my football and disability, and he said, Ellie, please, ne please never give up on the sport. Me and the girls are so proud. Keep promoting the sport. Incredible. Absolutely, Ellie. And this is a thing. He's always got time to speak to us. Um, after the games, and that, that's um, that's definitely Mark for you. Um, Connor, just uh, what, what are your thoughts on uh, the, the way, obviously, he came across at, uh, at the start? Yeah, I mean, it didn't really bother me because I don't read too... It sounds really... That sounds bad. It's going to be a short answer, I think. But, like, I don't really read into what managers say in press conferences um, because... I think you can get drawn into dissecting every single word that somebody says, and I know we're going to get onto this, but when we went on that tough run, when we were drawing a couple of games, everyone was dissecting word by word what he was saying, um, and that's just not for me because ultimately I'd rather just get results. Um, but yeah, I liked his enthusiasm. Like Benny said, he, he constantly 
you know, since the very first day, I listened to his first interview. Um, I'm sure he won't mind me saying this. It looked like he's aged a lot this season. I think the stress has uh, maybe got to him a little bit this, this season. But yeah, I listened to that first interview, and it, you know, his first thing, you know, it's about the fans and about getting people together. And I think that was needed after a, a turbulent summer. Because um, even let's not forget, even when it was appointed, you know, it was quite late. Um, but there was a lot of backlash even when he got appointed. So I think that first interview he got uh, that he did uh, with Man United was very refreshing to hear um, because the club as a whole was in um, it, there was just so much negativity. It was after the Super League, the protest. There was all the stuff about the women's side coming out, Casey Lee. There was so much negativity, and he came in with that first interview and just spoke differently. And I think a lot of fans, I said, maybe didn't want that, but I think a lot of people did, and I think that's what it needed as well. But what I do like and throughout the whole season, it's not an act. That is just him. You can see that because you can, you can, you know, act up to the camera once or twice, but you've seen that across the whole season. So, you know, and when you speak to him after game, that is him. And that's what I like. I'm sure um, Laura Skinner won't mind me saying this. And if she's watching, she's probably, uh, she's probably freaking out now. thinking, oh, God, what's he going to say? Because I've never quoted him on, on the show before. But what you said right there, Connor, is exactly what Laura said the very first time. Uh, I met her at the, at the very first game, you know, she did say, this is him, it's not an act, this is just the way he is. And I think, you know, you, you can't keep that up, that, that is just him. And that's why I was attracted to him, in that, because I just think that he's a, a, such a likeable character and he's just so genuine, which is great. Um, so, Mark, obviously, from there, we went to our first game. Uh, we travelled all the way to Glasgow before the season started. That was the first time that we saw him and we, we, obviously we saw him, we cheered his name and then he came over at the end of the game, didn't he? Yeah, first of all, it's really confusing because it's Mark and Mark. We're talk- and I feel like we're talking about, I'm like, I'm like, guys, I don't really deserve all this praise, but hey, can we? <laughs> um, look, there's, there's, I, I think, you know, Connor summed it up really well. He wasn't people's first choice and he still probably isn't now. The club was in complete turmoil when he was appointed. You know, the, the fact that Casey had left the way Casey had left the team's run from the beginning of the year, 2021 to the end, it was dire. And the club needed to be lifted. And, you know, as everyone has said, he's coming and he's, he's lifted everyone up. I, I've been lucky. I've been able to sit down with him a, a couple of times. And what you see with him is exactly what you get. It's not a show. It's not any of this. I'm just going to do it in front of the cameras. He's genuinely that person. Um, and yeah. Before we get on to the Rangers game, one of the first things when I sat down with him at Carrington, the first thing we talked about is because Mark and I spell our names with a C, not a K, which is unusual. And we spent the first 20 minutes talking about, why is your spell with a C? Well, mine's because my mum my mum liked it. Why is your spell with a C, Mark? Oh, my mum liked Mark Bowling. And we were talking, and that's genuinely the guy he is. He's genuinely that kind of guy who just has time for people and he wants to talk. Well, before we move on, Mark, because I did actually want to talk a little bit about that podcast that you did and obviously the conversations that you've had uh, privately as well. Obviously, don't go into detail of the content, but more about how how it all was. So feel free just to you know to elaborate a little bit on that, Mark. So the the, the first time we actually sat down with him was at Carrington. It was a pri- it was a meeting with Deborah was there and I was there. Uh, Mark was there. Um, and then the general manager of the women's team was there, and also John Murtz was there. And it was, it was, there was a lot of private conversations. And the meeting was only supposed to be about an hour. And in the end, it ended up being nearly two hours. And Mark was like, Well, I was going to stay late tonight. I guess I'll just be staying any later. And we were like, Well, we're really sorry. And he's like, No, no, no. I've got time for you guys. Sit down. Um, the second time was obviously the podcast. And um, we were invited to media day before the game at Old Trafford. And we were only given a a short time slot. It's because he was sectioned out to go and do interviews for out. And we were the last one. I think we were the last interview of his for the day. And he came in, when he came in and sat down with us, he goes, I can relax now. Because he, he, we we had this, because we talk at games and we have that, he goes, I can relax now. And obviously I started off going, well, we've only got you for a short time. And he straight away was like, no, no, no. I'm here for as long as you want me here. Don't worry about the media lot. I'm here for as long as you want me here. And that's generally the guy he is. And I think Connor said it in his right. He's coming in. He's, he's lifted the, the spirit around the place. And I think one of the things that I like about him, and it's something that he's talked about, he, he wanted to get to know each and every single player first. He didn't want to get to know them as, 
Leah Goldson, our marauding left winger, or Katie Zellum, the captain of the club. He wanted to get to know them as, as genuinely people, you know, talk to them as, you know, about dogs and music and films and all. And I think, you know, coming on from Casey, that's, is, as Connor said, and, you know, it's completely role reversal. Um, but Scotland Rangers, it was a fun day. You know, John, you were on the bus. Benny, you were on the bus. And we had no, there was no idea of us not going. It was straight away, we can go to a game. We're going. We went. And, the, you know, it, it was pre-season and no one really expects a lot from teams in pre-season. I know Benny and I, that season, we'd already done a couple of games in pre-season for the men. And we don't, you know, you're just going back to football to start to support them. But at the end of the game, Mark comes over and he, and he speaks to us. Obviously, at the time, there was still COVID restrictions are going on and he couldn't come as close as he, as he probably wanted to. Um, and, and yeah, I genuinely think he's... Look, I, I'm like Benny, and I'll say this. Benny will get a lot of people saying, oh, you're a Man United shill and, and all these things, and you're only, you know... Benny supports the club, I support the club, and you support the manager. Casey left under a cloud, and we all know now that it wasn't the nicest way she left. And he's coming in, he, you know, he's still got his doubters about him, whether he's good enough. There was other people that, you know, people were mentioning, you know, the Leon manager, the guy who manages Scotland now. And then there was this guy, Mark Skinner, who was constantly mentioned. However, he... He, when he interviewed for the role and everything else, he, he must have impressed and he didn't come in to say, look, you're Man United, give me a blank checkbook um, and I'll, I'll win you the league. He came in and he said, look, I'm going to work and I'm going to make this this team better. And it started off well at Rangers and we were there for that, as I said. And Yeah, look, I mean, I'll support, I'm like Benny. Benny said it, I'll support the manager until the game. And that's where I am. Just touching on that Glasgow uh, guy, just at the very end, I just remember him coming over to us and he said a few things. Uh, and I think Kate said something as well. I remember us taking a video of it. I can't remember exactly what he said there, but I just remember him highlighting the amount of energy that we showed. Yeah. And he turned around and said something along the lines of, if you keep on showing that energy, yeah. then we'll work really hard for you or something along them lines. Yeah. And yeah. um, he mentioned it in the podcast and he, when I sat down with him, he said, if you ever see my team's level drop, you tell me. Don't go to anyone else. You tell me, and I'll sort it out. And I think the, the other thing about it, as well as, as a manager, is that he's Casey was very hands-on. Casey was hands-on with everything. She took tra training. She did everything. Whereas Mark, he's got, he trusts his, his staff to go, look, you do this, and I'll do that, and, and whatever. And I think that's the way it is. And I, I, I like the way he manages the team. And I like the way he's got a good network around him as well. But yeah, Rangers, he didn't have to come over. I think they were, I think at the end, they were shocked that we'd gone up for a day. I mean, we literally did. We left at what? 10 o'clock in the morning, went straight up to Glasgow and, and straight back. And it was pre-season friendly. And I don't think, I don't, and Mark had obviously heard about us as a travelling group. And I, I remember saying to him, I said, when we went to Rangers, there was no thought in our minds. And he goes, and he said to me, he goes, but it was Rangers. It was pre-season. I went, it makes no difference. Yeah, spot on. And that's exactly the way that we are. And it's, and it's, it's, yeah. really, it's great. Yeah, it is. I'll oh, just put uh, Sporty Chatterbox's comment on screen. It's another good comment here. Uh, I got a chance to speak to Mark after the game and told him that Man United Women's Football Club had reignited my love of football. He seemed genuinely pleased and said he'd take that comment back to the dressing room. And uh, it's great. You know, it really is. It's, uh, it's it's good to see and hear things like that. Um, so, first game at LSV then. Uh, Connor, uh, you you, know, you was there. You was giving me lifts. So you uh, you drove us up there. Um, obviously, I don't know if you can remember too much of it. I think we went to the uh, the other hotel first, didn't we? Was that the game where we was at the other hotel and then we went to the... I can't remember. We stayed somewhere, didn't we? Oh, yeah. I can't remember, but um, yeah, it, it, that was the game anyway, and uh, yeah, it was a real positive atmosphere. Uh, again, Skinner came over and he spoke to us I, I, every time that we put a chant in, like you know, Skinner give us a wave, or Mark Skinner's bar me army, he reacted, didn't he, right away? It's almost as it could, it's almost like he couldn't react quick enough, he just had to cut, turn around and clap. And uh, it, that, that's obviously really something that we want to see as well as the kind of as fans. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I remember that so well because that was the time we booked hotels on the Greyhound around the corner. And I don't want to badmouth the ground, but my room wasn't great. And I drove home. I didn't even stay there that night because, uh, 
you know, I just <laughs> was, yeah, was not staying there that night. But no, did, I, I, hey, did I get back then, God? Did I come up with you or did we do No, no, no. We, we, we weren't at that stage in our uh, friendship yet, John. Oh, <laughs> I can't remember. I can't remember. I drove up on my own for that one. Um, but no, it was, it was, um, I think, and like, like you, uh, like I said in my first piece, you know, he's kept that up through the whole season. Every time you sing his name or you sing one of his songs, he's turning around. You know, not he's not going to do it every single occasion because he has got a job to do at the end of the day. Um, yeah. But he, he does do it more often than not, and I think that's great. And you could definitely tell at Reading that you know, obviously he had it at Rangers as well. But you could tell at Reading first game, obviously at Lee, he, he, he kind of. I don't know what I don't know what you'd expect as a as a manager when you've constantly got songs being sung about you. But you could almost see like the happiness in his face every time he turned around. Um, but it's like I said, that's. We've kept that up the, the whole season, even when it was tough through that tough. I keep saying tough period, like we lost a load of games. We just drew a load of games um, during that run, October, November. Even then, you know, he didn't shy away. He didn't, you know, hide away and didn't come up to us after games or didn't do He kept, he did exactly. And that's what I say. The whole season, he's been consistent in what he said and what he's done throughout the whole season. So you've got to commend him for that. So. Yeah, it started off well. Obviously, I know we're going to get to some of the, the rougher patches. But, yeah, it's just worth mentioning, like I said, he's been consistent the whole season. He's never shied away. He's never, you know, um, hid behind anything. Um, and to me, that's... that's as a, I know, obviously, everyone supports differently. But ultimately, that's all I want as a fan. As long as he's consistent and he's honest with the fans, I don't really... You know, results will come at the end of that. So, yeah, I thought a brilliant start. Obviously, it didn't go too well at Chelsea a few weeks later. But ultimately, like I said, he didn't hide away of that. He just stood up, stood at the front yeah. like he does at every game, win, lose or draw. He's still there. He comes to us every single time. So I think that's very commendable. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Benny, your thoughts on like match days itself where, um, you know, he, he acknowledges the players and even after the game as well, where he's doing his interviews or when players come over, he'll come over as well. You know, not all managers do that, do they? No, it reminds me a lot of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, in a way. And listen, we always say we don't like to compare, um, but he does, because Ole was exactly like that as well. You know, Ole was always the first, you know, if he, if he wasn't the first one to come across, he was always the one that came the closest. And Ole, when his time was at the end at Watford, he, he took a lot of flat that day, but he still had the bottle and the balls to come over as close as he could possibly get over. Um before the stewards were telling him to go, you know, to, to, to push back and go away. Uh, and he was, you know, another, none of the players came as close as he did. Um, so it, it just reminds me that, of that way. It seems to be uh, a proper respect, a, a proper mutual respect between, uh, between us and Skinner and Skinner and us, you know, um, I, I think he, I think he loves it. I think he, he, he really does enjoy it when, when we chat. He's able, he probably hasn't experienced that before either. He might have got maybe a young with Paul at maybe Birmingham. I don't know what the, the what the what the fandoms are like over in America. If it's anything like the embarrassing YouTube videos, it won't be that great. So um, you know, I think it's the, probably the first time he's really heard something where his name's getting constantly chanting. There's not just one song. There's a couple of different songs there with his name in it. Uh, and I don't think he's. Probably, I think he might even been uh, taken aback a little bit and a little bit surprised. At, Why is my name being sung in a couple of different songs? I've only been here two minutes. You know, I don't expect that. So I think we. I think we surprised him in a way as well. Like you know, and, and I think, and uh, ultimately, I think he 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 he, he was re uh, maybe taken aback a little bit about it, but he was really pleased that we was on his side. You know, we will try and make it as easy as possible for him. We were not all there. You know, so. Waiting in, 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 waiting in anticipation of what he's doing. We've gone in there. We've got straight behind him. We've got straight behind the team as we always do, and I think that's made his job a little bit easier, especially in the earlier days. You know, where he's still trying to find his feet. He's still trying to get his philosophy over to 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 the players, and he's trying to get his identity of the way that he wants Manchester United to play in the early days. We all know it takes a little bit of time, but I think he made his job just that little bit easier when he's hearing his name in. In, in, in a couple of different songs and um i, I really do like a manager when they, when they come over you know it doesn't matter what the result is win lose or draw they always come over they always applaud the fans because the one thing especially away from home which really get, gets up my yeah well i, I won't say it because it's, it's a bit of a rude word but really gets to me is when players just disappear down the tunnel you know especially in the men's game where cristiano ronaldo the greatest footballer one of the greatest footballers ever seen straight down the tunnel not doesn't even acknowledge the fans but at, at least you know skinner and the players to their credit no matter um 
what the result may be, they're always coming over. They always thank you our support, which is always great to see. You know, and it's not just one player, and um, uh, and it's not just Skinner. It's the whole squad. You know, even the players that didn't take part, even the coaching staff uh, that, you know, are just in the background, you know, you, you don't see them too much. They're all coming over. They're all applauding. Uh, and just the thing on Skinner and his coaching staff, uh, I've said it on plenty of shows before, that right at the start, it was always Skinner in the box tech area, you know, barking out orders, doing this, doing that. As the season's going on, Martin Ho is then sort of being um, the man that's been there in the tech area, you know, shouting, you know, all is out, you know, uh, uh, being the one that stood there where Skinner is that, uh, you know, took a seat back so he can, you know, watch the overall sort of play, you know, and get a, a better idea of things, what's going on. He's a trusted his coaching staff. Uh, and I think it's been an absolute um, credit to his coaching staff as well, as well as to Matt Skinner to um, sort of uh, entrust in his coaching staff that we have got them, some of the best coaches, I think, in the game. Um Listen, Martin Ho has been very, very highly spoken of uh, in different shows. Charlotte Healy, I think that's a, it's a genius idea for him to bring her into the first team fold, whereas Casey was sort of maybe kept her at arm's length, you know. I think it's genius that he's been in the under-21 coaching, you know. That's that, that's that's improving Charlotte Healy's coaching, you know, get to see what Martin Ho's doing, get to see what uh, firsthand what uh, Matt Skinner's doing, how he's managing the side. Uh, and then she could input ideas as well and maybe say, listen, uh, you know, he might go, I said, I think about put, putting Carrie Jones on. What, what what do you think? You know, what do you, what, what do you think? You know, uh, you know her the best you've seen in the 21s. And he'll give, and she'll, sorry, she will give her opinion on it and sort of tell Matt where, where's probably the best place that you could get that extra edge that you need from mm -hmm. Carrie, you know. So I think it's absolutely, uh, I think the guys uh, sort of, Bought into us, bought into the football club, but then it, then expanded on that by you know entrusting other people within his staff, you know, which is great. Whereas Casey seemed to be at times a bit of a lone shark, like we said, it was like her way or the highway, basically, you know. So I just think in the early days, mate, you know, and sort of the way that he's sort of like um, come across to us and embraced us is, is refreshing to see uh, and i'll go back to it again mate it just reminds me of so much of only good a soul shower that warmth that you get you know you, you know mark will know um i think you'll you, you'll also know yourself john is if you see ollie about you know hi ollie you know he says hi back he acknowledges big beaming smile you know um he's always got time for people you know if you want to just have a quick chat or an autograph for a picture he's always willing to do that uh, and I think Mark has been the same as well. I've seen Mark outside the grounds where I've been wheeling Zane and back from the pub and he's still out there signing autographs where everybody else is gone. He's smiling for pictures. He's, he's there talking to some of the fan base that may, that may have stayed around to, to, to want to give him their input, you know. Uh, and I think it's really good that he, he takes that all on board where some managers might say, yeah, listen, I've got to go. I've got a home, you know, to go to and everything. So like Mark said earlier on, it's, you know, I've got time for you guys. You know, we don't see that a lot in football anymore. A manager that goes, I've got time for you guys. It doesn't matter how long it takes. I want, I value your input and I value your support. So I think it's great. I think um, from what you said there, it just reminds me of something very, very obvious, but sometimes that we forget as fans of football and being on social media constantly. He's just a human being as well. You know, he'll talk to you like a human being and no one in football from what I, who I've met does ex exactly that more so than Mark Skinner you know um, I think we spoke to him a few times kind of after the game uh, mainly on the way days I think um, but it is it's just it's just a human being two people just talk about football or it might not even be about football in some cases but it, it, that, it's just that isn't it you know um, Mark do you want the last word on that one before we start talking a little bit about like the football side of things I think the the image that I I always remember from this season and Ben and Connor were there. You weren't John. You were um, at an award ceremony and you were looking like Al Murray. And that was the if everyone rem there was a picture that was going around and you were, everyone was going around like you, saying, you look like Al Murray. Yeah, <laughs> um, John, by the way, it's a lovely British name. Um, um, it was him and the flag at Durham. He draped his flag around him at Durham and he was walking around and Deborah and I met him a couple of days later at Carrington and he said, I love the flag. And he said, when I leave the club, and I was like, hang on, is he, yeah, is he resigning now or something? He's like, can I have it? And I was like, well, it's cost us a bit of cash, you know, 
sort me out and we'll talk about it. And that's the kind of guy he is. He, he, I think he, he's coming to the club and he understands that it's not a City, a Chelsea, or Arsenal. It's Man United. And he's mentioned it in interviews he's done as, um, on these presses. He's mentioned it with me. There was only one job he was ever going to leave the States for, and that was us. And, you know, people will say, well, he's got to say that. He, you know, he's been told to say that. I generally believe he he would only leave America. To, I mean, look, any one of us, why would you leave Orlando to come to Manchester with our weather here? You stay in Orlando, you get the sun out there more times than not. You, you know, it would have been a good life for him. But he's, he said he would only come back for United and... Look, I, I think the guy's great. And, and I think you said it as well, John, before. You know, um, he will talk to you not about just about football, music, films. He'll tell you, you know, he, he, told, he told me that, uh, he said it in the podcast, that after a game, he likes to go to Wagamama's. I mean, you know, Casey would never give you that information because Casey yeah. was a, a, a closed-off manager. Benny's right in, in the aspect of, I don't think, I think Casey appreciated us but i think mark understands how important we are for for the team and for the growth of 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 the team and 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 to push them forward whereas katie understood it but you know she complained that we were too loud and you know and, and all that whereas you know connor said it every time we mention his name he's like he's like his head's on a spring oh they mentioned my name i've got to turn around and clap you know it's great, but at some point we all know it, it will stop doing it because it'll have to concentrate on the football and yeah. making us pushing us further on to to the next stage. I think he's just genuinely excited. I think he's so happy to be here and, and yeah. the supporters that he's got. Yeah, he is. I mean, <laughs> we, we were talking, Matt. We were talking about the West Ham game away, and you know, it was an awful night. I mean, Benny, you and I drove. Benny, you drove us down to to that game and it was torrential rain and Mark said I didn't expect any of you to come down in this weather he said if I didn't have to go out and it I wouldn't but you are, have travelled down from from wherever you are and I just said it's just what we do as, as fans of football you go and watch your team and you know there'll be conflicts where we'll be able to go there's work schedules there's family stuff there's everything else I said, but when we go we go you know uh, the Brent, the Arsenal game. I wasn't at the Arsenal game in the Conti Cup. I know Connor was. Ben, you were working. We were trying to wingle our way around. Ben and I were at the Brentford game. We were down the road. And, I, I, we, you know, I saw Mark and I said, I'm really sorry I wasn't at the Arsenal game. He goes, well, where were you? I said, well, I was in London. I was just at the Brentford game. He goes, he shook his head and he went, not good enough. And then he smiled and laughed. And I was like, and that's the kind of guy he is. So, look, I think, I said it before, I think the guy's, a breath of fresh air. I think he's taken a team that was down in the doldrums, you know, moaning and groaning about everything. And I think he's turned the spirits around and he's got to see them as people now and he's, he's got them hopefully playing the way he wants to play. There we go. I think Deborah yeah. sums it up quite nicely there. <laughs> there's such a bromance going on. We don't know which way around that is, though. Is it Mark Skinner loves Mark Henry, or is it the other way around? I don't well, know. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll let people interpret that for themselves. I'm, I'm, I possibly couldn't comment. <laughs> um, so that's our thoughts on, obviously, Mark uh, off, the, off the pitch a little bit. But, you know, let's talk a little bit about on the pitch. And Connor is, is um, obviously a different style of play to what we're used to slightly different to what Man United fans in general are used to as well. You know, a lot of was made about oh, not using natural wingers and all this kind of stuff. He, you know, he's coming, he's got his own way of doing things. And I, I personally think it's a more intelligent way of playing. I think the players have had to learn a lot more. Um, I think under Casey's way, it was very much um, use your wingers and rely on your wingers a lot more. Whereas here, I think every player has to step up and some could step up. Some took a little bit longer to step up. Um but yeah, I, what's your thoughts on on the initial few games that you did see, like the, the kind of way that we were playing? Yeah, now you know I've got a very strong opinion on this because you know I was very vocal in his defence. You know there was a lot of it was which would let's be right, it was ridiculous really earlier on in the season. Some of the you know things thrown at Skinner's door um, early on. I don't get me wrong, nobody's perfect. The whole squad have made mistakes this season. Skinner himself, if you speak to him, he'll admit he's made mistakes this season. Everyone does. It's a football season. You're going to make a mistake somewhere along a season. 
Um, but, you know, early on, I agree with you. I think it was very different. And I, and I heard this a lot all through the, you know, oh, last season we used to do this, but last season we played like that. Well, forget that. That's last season. We're now in this season. This is how he wants to play. And I think you're right. I think it took the players a little bit of time um, to adapt to that, um, which is going to. It's a different style. And I've said before, all of the studies point to it takes 18 months to drill a new system into a player. So you think he's not even had that 18 months yet. So think of where it could be once the players have fully understood what he's trying to get them to do. And I've said this to you, know, to you, John, and people around me that stand me at games, get me you know, probably sick of talking about it. But all, all I hear as well is, oh, he needs to change formation. And I keep saying to people, formations are not as important as people think. A 4-3-3 is not that much different to a 4-2-3-1 and so on and so on. Formations is just your defensive shape and how you want to line up kind of out of possession. Like I, I joke with you, John, all the time. Do you really think when we're on the attack, Leah Goldwyn's going, oh, actually, I'm not in a 4-3-3 here. I need to make sure that I'm in line with it. It doesn't work like that. You work on your little transitions of play, your triangles and all of those kinds of things. And I think that's what's taken the players a little bit longer to adapt to this season. But it was going to, just like you said, the polar opposites in managers off the field, but also on it. They've got their own ways of playing. And let's not forget, I've said this all season, this is still not skin and squad, really. He had a couple of signings in January last season. Were the play they the players that he wanted or were they, you know, from Case's brain? You know, you don't know. So, yeah, I think he's done well with what he got. Like I said, I think he made a couple of mistakes early on. But like I said, no player has gone through the season mistake free and no player ever will. Ronaldo's the best player, you know, in my opinion, of all time. And he's made mistakes this season. It's going to happen. Um, yeah, so I think he's... He's rode it quite well. He, like I said earlier, he didn't shy away from the criticism, especially when we drew to, I think it was the Everton one, because we drew to Spurs and we drew to Everton. Um, and we had that Durham game kind of in and around that. That's when the pressure really ramped up. But I said he didn't shy away and continued in the way that he wants to wants to play. Made a couple of little tweaks in December, the, the Brighton game, and adapted well. So, yeah, I think on the field as well, he's shown that he can adapt with what he's got, but still... Um, pushing his core beliefs and his philosophers on the field as well. Yeah, yeah, I, I thoroughly agree, absolutely. And we know we speak about it week in, week in, week in, week out, don't we? And we can understand, obviously. And I think a lot of people probably understand it, but just didn't like to accept it. But if you think about it, some of you know our, our weakest points were still only just a few draws. You know, a couple of those. You know, you could always accept one or two draws because you know you're not going to win every game. But then we just had another couple of draws or one win on penalty or something like that. And it was never really that bad. But then obviously we went from that to a good run of games over Christmas where I missed them because I was working, unfortunately. Good old December in retail. But um, yeah, and then we went on to that fantastic run where I think we scored something like maybe scored 16, conceded none. I think it was four or five wins on the trot, keeping clean sheets. And then all of a sudden the fans started to realise, oh, hang on a little bit here. This way it does work. We just need the players to actually start performing. And I don't know if Ben's Ben's ready yet, so I'll come to you first, Mark, on this one. But yeah, just um just that, that purple patch that we had, you know, it really put us up there, didn't it? Yeah, no, it really did. And I think there's a couple of bits that I think a lot of people, I think Connor mentioned it before. There's a lot a few bits in between all of that where people were like, Well, who is this guy? He came into pre-season late, as Connor mentioned. He, you know, he only had I think 48 hours he was he was he was announced on the Friday and then his first game was on the Saturday. So he didn't even have a preseason training with the team. He then, you know, we then played uh, Reading and I thought that was that was a great a great start for him to get his first game under his belt and a win. And then we had the difficult spell, you know, the, the loss to Chelsea. It was it was a tough one to watch. We were stood in the stands and it was difficult for us all to watch. However, it, it's Chelsea. And you've got to kind of look past that Chelsea game because it's in itself an isolated incident. No team has done that again to us. And he's, he, he, he slowly was trying to get his message over. I think, uh, from my from my point of view, I think Connor, you know, I think Connor's right. A lot of the players had to adapt to his style, you know, and, and think for themselves instead of like Casey having a set, you know, if A happens, B must happen and then C. I think Mark, you know, he goes, if A happens, you can choose any of these options. You play your game. And I think the, the players had to adapt. We had to adapt. And yeah, we then went into the Everton draw, the, the, the Tottenham draw. You know, we had Durham in, in between. And then we had Brighton away. And that's when the run st started to happen. And, I think you were right. It was like someone turned the switch on and everyone was going, oh, 
This is how we can... Oh, right. I think there's always going to be disgruntled fans. I, I, I really do. I don't think you're going to keep all fans happy. I, I think, you know, a lot of people wanted to see Vilda play. A lot of people wanted to see Vilda and Jackie play. And for some reason, there was people in the crowd who were going, well, why is Katie Zellum still playing? What's she doing? And, you know, there's a reason why she was in the team. There's a reason why Vilda wasn't in the team. Those decisions are down to, to the manager. And look, I, you know, I think Vilda is great and I hope we get to see the best of her. But Katie's in that, Katie's been constant throughout the season. I think for me, and I, Connor and I spoke about this at the Borussia Dortmund under 19 game, and I said the one thing that I like from Mark is you're seeing a natural progression each and every week. You're seeing the team evolve each and every week. Now, last season under Casey, we finished a point off third. This season, we finished, I think it was it four points off third. But it seems like we were a lot closer than we were last season under Casey. And, I, I, you know, I, what I'm looking forward to this season is he's going to have a full transfer window to himself. A lot of the signings that came in in the summer, well, all of the signings that came in the summer were all cases. He brought in three in, at, at Christmas, but they they were defensively, you know, we needed the Diane Caldwell to, 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 to look out for Millie. Jade Moore wasn't fit. We only saw him parts and, and Zina, Zina run was was injured a lot so I, I'm I'm I I like the way he plays I like the way he coaches I think Benny summed it up brilliantly that he trusts his team and that uh, you know Martin Ho stands on the sidelines and he shouts out and obviously he trusts everyone else around him and hopefully next season you know you'll 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 be away now on holiday having relaxed you'll come back you'll bring in his players Obviously, the players to leave, and obviously those are being well discussed out there in social media world, and who's going and who's staying, and hopefully next season we can push on to where we, to to push to third. Look, I think we're all realistic. The four we're all realistic to maybe though that the team, the three teams above us, are great teams. That you know they're not teams that. You know, you look at those teams and you go, well, Chelsea are where they are for a reason. You know, Emma Hayes built that squad mm -hmm. city well you know city are going to be another question mark next season with the amount of players that they're going to potentially lose and arsenal you know i think we're a lot closer to city and arsenal right now than we are to chelsea and look i like the way he plays i like the way you know at the beginning of the season katie zellen was our defensive midfielder and everyone was giving a slack but mark trusted him with that job and I think that's the most important word is that once the manager trusts you, you're fine. And he trusts her to do that job and he trusts all his players. And I think, as I said at the beginning, he needed, they needed to adapt to him and he needed to adapt to them. And I think once that was all out of the way, it was great. And, and the run of results we had from Brighton onwards, they were great results and we were beating teams and keeping clean sheets. And that's what we wanted. And, you know, to dominate the games. And, you know, I can't say much more about how much he's changed the way of style of play for that team than we were under Casey. I think just before you jump in, Benny, because I just wanted to make a quick point on the support as well during that tough run. Because obviously I know the four of us on here, and there's plenty of people in the comments and plenty of people did. But I'm going to quote, we did this on Monday. I think Charlie did it, but I'm going to quote it again as well today because it's, it relates to the Skinner thing as well. I think El Nene's interview that he did a month ago, obviously the Arsenal player, when he said about supporting through the bad times and it's easy for fans to support when everything's going great, but where's your support when things are not going so great? And I think that relates to here because there was a lot of people, I think, that kind of just threw in the towel early and went, oh, no, get him out, no good. And it's like, where's that? And then when we went on that great run, oh, Skinner's amazing. You know, what a great man. And it's like... You don't need that. Obviously, we're always going to support all season, but they need the support the most when we're on that tough. Yeah. When we were going through those draws, when we lost to Leicester in the Conti Cup, that was a real low point. That's when he needed the support. You know, it's great we have it all season, and you know we're always going to and going into next season it'll be the same. But that quote from Alnet, I thought was brilliant that he did on on, on Sky yeah. talking about supporting through the bad times is more important than when the team are winning. Yeah, the, the, the one thing for me, Connor, and you and I have spoken about this at games as well, is that there are so many people who are still stuck in 2019 saying, oh, you know, Mark Skinner's not our manager. Kate, you know, they still see Casey as the manager or they still call Casey the gaffer. They're not going to call Mark the gaffer because he's not the gaffer. He's, he's not who they wanted. You know, that, you know, 
that run, a lot of people, like you said, kind of they they switched on him. Oh my god, he's amazing! Oh, and the the point is, is that if he has another bad run of results, they'll all flip back straight away. Oh, we never wanted him to begin with, and all this. However, there is a core of people. You know, there is a core of fans who go, the guy's amazing. Yeah. Benny, do you want your side on this, mate? <clears throat> to be fair, mate, you know what I mean? Right at the start, mate, he was he, he was on a hiding to nothing. You know, there was some people that have been on this show, so I will call them out, because fo- fo- Rachel Fickle football fans, I'm not sure of him, I don't want him. He, this is not the manager's name that I wanted, blah, 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 blah. And it's exactly the same as when... The silly season starts, which we're approaching now, a transfer window, where people just list to utter bollocks and utter absolute tripe. That people will just sit there and go, Well, the Galacticos, we're going to sign this world class player, that world class player, this player. And if we don't sign him, the toys come out the pram. You know what I mean? Uh, and people weren't, weren't giving this guy a chance. And, the, 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 and there were some people that have been on this channel, I don't care what, how big the, 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 they think their support is. That they would categorically against this guy. Oh, I'm not so sure. I, I don't like the way he talks. I don't like this. I don't like that. He should have been this manager. He should have been that manager. Uh, and now they're all around him like they're his best friend. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, Mark, you know, I love you, Mark. This, Mark, this, that, Mark, you know. Love you too, Ben. Come, <laughs> Come on, man. You weren't there from day one. Day one, you wanted him out of the club because you listened to your mates from the States who were like, Oh, and he didn't do very well at San Diego way. We all know the state's football is crap, mate. They only care about the national team. You know, the, 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 the football clubs are rubbish. Um, you know, you know, you were dead against this guy. The, the worst people that have been on this show, you know, that have been dead against this, that have been dead against the guy. And all of a sudden now, he's it, it, the best thing, uh, the best thing since sliced bread. You know, um, I, I just feel like... So, so, Sometimes the football fans are quite fickle. It's like, you know, um, if it's not flavour of the month or that person's not flavour of the month, it's so easy to, to to toss the side to say, oh, they're not good enough, they're not this, they're not that. The guy was at a height to nothing. Everton away was one of the earlier memories that I had early on in the season. And he was getting absolute pelters from a guy. Oh, skinny, you're not good enough, skinny. You're not a Man United manager, skinny, this, skinny, that. Right when he came up close, was he had, he'd have heard it all from this guy. And um, and I was thinking, geez, that's not the way you support. Yes, we've had a, we've had a disappointing result, but you know, this is early days. Give the guy a chance. You know, um, people are like, oh, he's only managed Burn. Look at his CV, and I'm thinking, his CV's got nothing to do with it. Like like um, Matt Crane pointed out, he got he got them to a cup final. You know, Birmingham City to a cup final. You know, it it, it is a good coach. You just need to, uh, and a good manager. You need to let him. Um, Give him a chance. He's not. He's not had a full summer transfer window yet. You know. Let's be fair. That those the last summer signings were mostly what Casey signed off on, or or you know something some along them lines. They weren't his. They were his signings. They were signings that he was like, yes, I, I've scouted them, or my coaching staff has scouted them. This is his first big window. Uh, January, we always know could be hit and miss in the game of football. You know, he probably had to to, to bring in a couple. You know with Fred Bear as a, 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 as a squad with Fred Bear, you know. Um, and I just feel like so, so he was on a high enough from the start. Uh, and then we started picking up the results. Everybody started getting behind him again. It was the best thing since sliced bread. It started dipping a little bit and then people are like, oh, I didn't travel all this way out of Chelsea to, to come watch us lose. Well, don't travel then, my friend. You know what I mean? There's another guy that's been on this channel before. Don't travel, fella. You know what I mean? We're not asking you to. But we travel to support the team, win, lose, or draw. You know, um, but even when the going gets tough, people, yes, they, they get pissed off or everything. But, you know, ultimately, we're, we're always there. We're always supporting, you know. And if, if it's too much of a chore for you to come support, don't support, fella. Just stay at home, mate. You know, I'm just sick of people, like, throwing their toys out the pram every time that something doesn't go their way or the manager doesn't get a signing in because uh, Jim Bob Charlie from America saying this, this play is it absolutely amazing. It's the type of player. We have to be realistic with, within ourselves. We're, you know, we, we are one of the biggest clubs in the world, but we're just brand new to the women's game still. You know, we don't have the um, sort of financial might that Chelsea have, the Arsenal might have, and the City might have. Uh, and people tend to forget that 
the bigger budget's all going on the men's side, which is an absolute complete mess. And obviously, Eric has to get quite a lot of that money to sort of try and sort out whatever he's got to sort out, you know. Um, so maybe Mark, Mark's not going to be given the budget of, say, Emma Hayes just yet. But that doesn't mean that he probably won't do in the future. You know, it's, just, it's, it's a bit of a slow process. People, I think as fans, and, and I'm sometimes guilty of it, I think... We want success overnight. It's 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 like a modern day success. Everyone's flipping around. It. I don't know what's going on here. But yeah, everyone, everybody, everyone's thinking, oh, it needs to happen overnight. You know, if he doesn't get off to a great start, why do we bring this guy in? You know, so sometimes as a football manager, uh, you have to be, you have to give him patience. You give him a little bit of time. It doesn't happen overnight. So Alex Ferguson's a great example. Didn't happen overnight for him, but he, what he did is he. Tore it for an up and started again, you know. Um, did a lot of building behind the scenes, you know. Oli Gunnar Solskjaer was exactly the same like that. He had to tear up whatever he had to tear up or what's happened under Jose and other previous managers um, to, you know, I don't know what's happened with Foster, by the way, uh, but to, uh, you know, to, to, to bring in his philosophy, to, to bring in new ideas, to to, to, to build up the, the, the academy side of football again. And I just think, like, sometimes, you know, you need to give these people a chance, you know, before you write them off straight away. Uh, and, you know, I just think, you know, I think now it's very, very hypocritical of some people now that they're all lining up outside LSV. Oh, Mark, can I have your autograph? Mark, can I have a picture? He was writing the sky off by the start of the season before even the ball was kicked because his name wasn't the most fanciful name in the hat. So um, I just think that, you know, listen, the guy's done well. The guy's done well this season. You know, yes, we, we, people might say, oh, we didn't improve because we... You know, instead of we, we finished a point behind uh, Arsenal last season, we finished two points behind City this season. But it's still consistent. We, we still we're still in the running. You know, you know it went down to the last game of the season. You know, we took it down to the wire, and that's all you can, that's all you can ask for the guy. You know, unless uh, remember this, he's still not had a, a full window yet where he's getting the players in that he wants, uh, and you know a full summer's transfer window. So. You know, it's took a little bit of time for players that were regimented in Casey Stoney style to to get used to another another person's style, because a lot of them, a lot of the players, let's, let's not be fair, have been, have been bought up over with Casey for a couple of years, uh, and her style of football is really ingrained in, in, into your mind. Uh, um, and sometimes it's a li it's quite hard to change from a sort of regimented sort of style of Casey Stoney to a, a new person's style where formations are different or something else that's tactically different, you know. And sometimes it does take players a little bit of time just to get used to that, uh, especially the original players that were there since day one under Casey Stoney. But if I had it hammered into them, there's, it's her way of playing, et cetera, et cetera. But listen, it's all about time. It takes time. Um, and I think Mark's done a terrific job. And I think he's, he's a decent guy. At the end of the day, he's a really, really decent guy. I think, yes, I think he gives them a bollocking if they need a bollocking. Uh, you know, but I think first and foremost, he always spacks them to the hill. No matter how good or bad you think a player is, or if you, if you want the player to be at a football club or not, he will always give them the backing, and he'll always give them a chance. You know, at United, which is which is the best thing to do. Um, so I just think, listen, get off the guy's case. Anyone that's still on him, get behind him next season. And let's just go for it. Um, let's just let's, whatever whatever it'll be will be. You know. Um, but just because he wasn't the, the fancy name in the hat, you know, he came from um, from from a, from America where the club game is not deemed as big, you know, as the, the national team. And people are like, oh, he's not quite flavour of the month. Who's this guy? You know, listen, you know, now now all these people who are doubting him are all mostly all swarming around him outside LSV, wanting his autograph, his picture, and you know, wanting to tell him uh, how to play his game of football now, which I find fucking laughable as well. I'm like, listen, this guy's a football manager. You know, leave the football inside to him. Oh, you must sign this player. He knows what players he wants to sign. Doesn't just because you want the, the, the latest fad name in, in the biggest, you know, one of the biggest names in world football, which possibly might be unattainable um, at, at this moment in time. Uh, and you know, you don't want to chuck your toys out the pram because he's not fucking signed the player that you wanted to sign. Um, get behind him. He knows what he wants, and he knows it is probably it is identified months ago. He probably as far back as last year, what type of player he wants. So let's just get behind him. Let's just trust it. Don't listen to bullshit journalists that haven't got a clue. They're all guesswork. 
I can, it don't, doesn't matter how good the journalist is, it's all guesswork. Bless your Mark Skinner, mine ho, um, or anybody in that immediate circle, you do not know who's coming in. So just take a chill pill. I know funny season and transfer season is coming across. Take a chill pill. Get behind the guy, and whoever we sign, get behind the guy. If it's not your most, if it's not the player that you that you want, or it's the most desirable must-have thing uh, at the minute that everybody wants to see at the football club, um, or people want to see because they're the lightest uh, fashionable name out there. Just because he doesn't want him at Manchester United doesn't mean that Mike Skinner doesn't know what's best for Man United. So look, get get behind him. And I'll shut up now. I'll tell, tell you what, Benny, I, th I think that was amazing because I managed to restart my computer and jot the warm one out there and they used to... Well, you know, you can play him as chairs. He never talks this much. He's, you know, Ben's a very quiet lad, if anyone who knows him. He's like very quiet and I think there's... Yeah, but there's two important points here. Number one, Benny, you're right. There's two important points that Benny made. Number one, Benny, you're right. There's two important points that Benny made. The first one is the fans. And, you know, there are people, and we know them, who, you know, we were at the Chelsea game at the Conti Cup and we heard the, oh, I've not driven all this weight for all of that. Benny's right. If you don't like it, don't bother travelling. And there's also people in the crowd who have been there who are saying, Skinner, earn your money, earn your money. Trust me, he earns it. After that Chelsea game, when we lost 6-1, and it was a hammering, he could still find the positives to take out of that game. Not many managers could see any positives. None of us could, but he found the positives to bring out of it and to go into training on the Monday or the Tuesday, whenever it would be, and go, he did this really well. Forget the result, forget what happened, forget all of that. This is the good stuff. This is what we need to do. And I think that's the kind of... I think that's the kind of guy he really is. And I think, you know, forget, as Benny said, the fans and, and what they're saying. Forget that. He knows his job. And we know what we do. And we go, we do our bit, he does his bit. We give him everything we've got as fans. And he makes sure that he and his team give us everything that we've got. And that's the level of the guy. And that's the level. Yes, he wasn't everyone's first choice. We all know that. But he was someone's first choice. And that person is Manchester United. And that's more important than, with all due respect, than you, John, than, than Connor. And then you, Benny, and me. The club wanted him. He interviewed well. The club saw what he wanted to do. The club understood what he wanted to do. He told them his vision. And they went, this is the guy. And I, the other important thing about Mark is, is that he will bring the youth through. We've already seen it. He's played Terry. Carter came on for a debut at, at, at Bridgewater. He will bring on the kids. Whereas I think there's a lot of people out there who just wanted someone to come in, write to get a checkbook written to them and signed off that they could bring in, you know, the best players. And that may be some way people's way of wanting to have it, but it's not the Man United way. It's not the way I've ever seen Man United do it. Man United have never gone out, in my opinion, and wrote checks to win a league. That's not the way we do it. We do it through youth. We do it through, and we go through the soft times and we go through the good times. Mark would Mark is better right. Mark will already know who he wants to bring in. He will also know who's going. And he will be making those plans now, or he would have already made them to, to ha what happens in the summer. So yes, the fans, there, there is an element who still don't like him, and that's their issue, not mine, because I'm supporting, I support him. You support him, Connor, Ben supports him, John supports him. We all support him. And, and then when he goes on a run, when we get into the top three, which, you know, will be hopefully soon, and we're all going on those Euro ways to, you know, Kazakhstan or wherever, all of a sudden you'll find those people who were dissing him, they'll be, oh, can we come with? Oh, let's all go together. It doesn't kind of work that, it, it do, you know, obviously no one's going to say, no, you can't come, but, oh, we've always liked him or we've always wanted him. You know, you... You can only do so much, and he can do everything that he can do. And you're right, the bar me playing is coming. And um, Benny, the first round's on Benny. He's already told me this privately. Benny's buying the first round on the plane, everyone. <laughs> apparently so, apparently so. But what I will say as well is that, um, just in hindsight, whoever leaves the football club, leaves the football club at the end of the day. If, you're not, if they're not involved in the manager's plans, no matter who, who the names are, get behind the manager. You know, because I've, I've seen a lot of this since... Um, since our last game at Chelsea, all this person leaving, and it's like, have they died? It's the way they're all crying about it on social media. The person hasn't even left yet. There's been, there's been no, you know, you don't even know what's happening behind the scenes. 
Benny, you play? Well, whoever leaves, well, I'll obviously get. Thank you very much. You know, you've been a great part of Manchester United. Goes with all our best well wishes. But this player FC rubbish is getting too much for me. And it's really, really bad in the women's game. This player FC crap. And then, you know, who Cotton, you know, if one of their favourite players leaves, you know, the darlings, you know, because they've got a cute smile according to social media. Uh, if, if they leave, it, you know, who's the code of camp for that? Oh, it's Mark's fault. It's this fault. Listen, if Mark doesn't want the player, you don't want the player. If the player doesn't want to be a Manchester United, the door's there. It doesn't matter how good they are how, uh, how big the name is if you don't want to play for Manchester United don't be here you know it doesn't matter who they are how long they've been here what how big the names are you know we want committed people and the terms of Mark Skinner and it, and, and, and it flips on the other side with Mark Skinner as well if Mark Skinner does want to play because he doesn't fit into it to his future plans or that player might be behind the scenes creating a little bit of uh I wouldn't say trouble because I don't think anybody creates trouble, but it doesn't really quite fit into his, his future plans and things not being going right in training and, uh, or whatever it may be. Honest player might even want to move away for personal reasons. Listen, don't blame the manager for it. You know, as simple as that. Players move on, especially the, women, the, the women's game, they move on quite regularity, you know. Um, so just get behind the manager because that's the other thing that does made in players FC, man. It's like you. Are my United fans or are you player FC fans? Because if you play as FC fans, go and knock what they go two, to. Two points. One, Deborah's right. Uh, Benny hates player FC, but yet you're Hanson FC, Benny. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, yeah. But, Hang yeah. on. And the second, uh, point, the second point is the answer is yes to Deborah's question. Benny will wear those shorts. Because they were sh they were underpants, they weren't shorts, Deborah. But we all the know shorts, they were shorts. Come, them come, come with shorts are shorts. Um, I'm just, I'm just going to move it on slightly. Um, and one thing I've, I'm just going to throw my two pence as well, just off the back of this. People remember, it seems to be short memories as well. We, we nearly went top in February when we went to the Etihad campus, or the Academy Stadium, or whatever it's called, Man City. We nearly went one point off Chelsea and three three off the top, I think, if we'd have beat City at their ground. You know, we were, we were close this season. Obviously, you know, it, it tailed off towards the end, but we were nearly there. So I think people just need to remember that. Absolutely, and I think you, you, people do have short-term memories in football. We, d we don't remember that we were one point off top. People don't remember that. people Because people won't see that as, well, you're one point off the top, yet you finished fourth. What happened? Or you must have gone on a terrible run. The run from December all the way through to the end of the season, we were all right. We played well. You know, we lost to Chelsea in the Conti. We lost to City at the Academy. But I don't think it was... a you know, I don't, you know, the Conti game was probably the poorest performance for me in the back run. Arsenal away, I thought we deserved to win that game and, and we were all there. And I oh know Benny wasn't. We were all there and we deserved to, to win that game. So we played well constantly. And, you know, people will never see the positives. Like, like we always say, you know, we were one point off the top in January or February and then we ended up fourth. People won't see that, but Chelsea had so many games in hand. Arsenal had games in hand. City had games in hand. That this was only gonna it was only gonna go one way. And we have got this. We have got a smaller squad. And Mark can't rotate it as as much as he, he would probably like. You know, we lost Efa, we lost Mill, we lost some big players at, at crucial times. Mark, you said you don't know what happened. It's quite simple. City won 14 out of 15 games in their last 15 games. That's what that's what they did. Yeah. And we just couldn't match that. But yeah. it's, not, it's not a bad thing not being able to get 14 out of 15 wins at our level. No, so. look, I mean, it's not going to be a popular thing I'm going to say now, but, you know, you've got to give City kudos for going on that run. 14 out of 15, you can't knock it. I mean, our, our, our form this season has been up and down, up and down, up and down, but we've been consistent. I think we've been a consistent up and down. We've either been really good or we've been mm. poor in, in some games. We've been constant. And that's what I'm I'm hoping will be the, the way to things to come. It, it leads on nicely into it. It shouldn't take too long. It should be just a you know, quick fire. We'll go around the house. In terms of, <clears throat> I don't know whether to call this memorable moment or best moment of the season. Um, I know what mine's going to be already, so I'll, I'll come back to my last. I think mine's going to be the same as John's, but I'll just go in order of, of what it is on screen. Benny, you're kind of, if you had to pick a skinner highlight this season, obviously I know he complimented your beard at Durham. That was that was quite entertaining that little conversation. Um, but do, do you have kind of a, a highlight of the season that, that, that Skinner's managed to give us this season? 
I just think um, I'll go back to it again. I just think the highlight for me is just being the way that he's he's, he's took us in, you know, as as supporters, as fans. Not true. You know? Yeah, here we go. Oh, all right. <laughs> I thought it was all about not true for me then. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, just, just the way that he, he's talked to us um, as supporters. You know, I, I said before, it's easy for managers and uh, uh, players to back supporters to one side, especially uh, in this day and age. But I, I just generally, for the highlight for me, is just his warmth towards us, you know, wanting to talk to us, wanting to give us a, a wave and a clap when we were chanting his name. You know, uh, uh, and having banter as well, like, like I said about the beard, and, that, and I said, Skinny, you're like a walking gap advert. A United manager should wear a suit on, and I always, I, I always believe that United we should be the best, uh, the best dressed team. You know, the FA Youth Cup final, uh, Nottingham Forest all turn up in their track suits. Manchester United uh, all turn up in fancy United suits. You know, and I think that's where the way it always should be. Um, uh, but uh, but then again, he does have some nice coats, doesn't he? Does Skinner? Uh, but uh, listen, I just think it's just just the, the warmth that he, that, he, that, he, that he gives towards us um, whereas we, as we pointed out before as Casey might have had us at ha arm's length a little bit uh, even though she was always great for our support I, I know that but um, I just think that Mark sort of um, we're sort of in it we feel like we're in it together more with Mark if you know what I mean we're in it as one big whole the players the coach the coaching staff the fans we're in it as, as one big sort of family type of thing so uh, that's what I, that's my, my that's what I'd say would be my highlight. Yeah, um, hard to disagree with that. Mark, oh, Mark go on. I'll go, I'll go in order of what it is on screen. Uh, so mine, I, I mentioned it before. I think mine is Durham away. The way he came over to us. I mean, John. Obviously, we mentioned that you were there. He came over to us. He talked about his flag. He loves his flag. And at the very end, he he wore it like it was a cape. At one point, I thought he was going to run around like he was Superman, if I'm being completely honest, the way he had it wrapped around him. And he wanted to do uh, he wanted to do his interview on TV with it wrapped around him. And I don't think the club would have allowed, allowed him to do it. And yet, that's generally the kind of guy he is. He, 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 he's embraced himself into the club, into the fans. And um, genuinely, what you see with him is... What you get, I mean, yeah, I mean, Deborah, I mean, it is a great part. I'm Mark, he's Mark, it is, it is the beginning of art, as Deborah would say, our bromance. Um, and having the opportunity to sit down with him and getting to know him not as Manchester United manager, but as Mark Skinner, getting to know him as a, as a human being. And, and I, I said it earlier on, and I'll, I'll, I'll say it again, I don't think there's us. As a, as a group of people, us as fans would have ever had that from Casey. I think under Mark, he he appreciates us. And um, what I did say to him is I said, if you think we're big now, wait till you get us into Europe because you, you will see nothing else. You, you won't understand how big it will get. And um, look, all I'm going to do is carry on what I'm doing and it'll be the same as Benny. It'll be the same as you, John. It'll be the same as you, Connor. It'll be the same as a lot of these people in the comments. I'm just going to support him and the team. That's it. It's the most enjoyable way to be as well. And Benny just kind of uh, used a couple of describing words for Mark. If I could just uh, jump in as well. I think they're both being mentioned throughout the past hour, but I would just say warm and welcoming. You know, I, I think it just, he just, I think he just like shows how much of a decent human being he is. Genuine. We can talk about how tactically aware he is or all this, that and the other, but I think, that's down to opinion. I don't think anyone's ever said that, that he's not uh, welcoming to fans. That he's, you know, he, when you speak to him, he's sincere. And um, yeah, I, and, and we've read some comments in the first 10, 15 minutes about some of the conversations he's had to some of the fans as well. So if I can just, you know, add, add that as well. My favourite moment would be um, probably the same as Connor's um, Arsenal away. You know, winning Arsenal, knocking them out of the cup in, on the wrong ground was absolutely amazing. Um, Probably the best celebrations I've had at Man United women's team, um, you know, since 2019. And uh, it was great to do, it really was. Uh, and then obviously after the game, he came over to us. And uh, Conor, I'll let you tell the rest of the story. Yeah, definitely. I think, well, you've got a question for, for you here first, John, before I move, <laughs> before I carry that story on. 
Um, <laughs> no, it didn't bother me one bit. I'm not Birmingham, am I? I'm Black Country, so um, no, it didn't he, bother he, me. He did, he did say when he told us that, he did say, I like to keep it on the down leg because he was born <laughs> near Villa. He was born on, he was born like around the corner from Villa Park, so that's why he's a Villa fan because he doesn't like to tell anyone he's a Villa fan. I said, but, no. and then I said, well, you know, Man United fan now, aren't you? He goes, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and, and yeah, for, for me, it's de- <clears throat> what everyone said. I think, yeah, Durham was fantastic. With, like you said, when he was because he kind of walked away with the flag and then he came back and held it up. And, yeah, you know, there's so, at, so at many. At one point, at one point, Deborah turned to me. I think you were stood next to me, kind of. She goes, I hope we're getting that back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, th- so I think for me, yeah, mine was definitely Arsenal away as well. Um, pure, just you know, you can't beat a late winner in a cup, you know, away at Arsenal. It was, it was fantastic. and you know, we spoke to him afterwards. I did the first, the first time I'd spoke to him, you know, when he was there and I just went up to him. I wanted to hug him, but I thought, you know, COVID and all, you know, they were still a little bit strict at that point. So I just said to him, you know, thanks for the best moment in football I've had for, for years because that's what it felt like at the time. And obviously, you know, everyone's seen it. It went out on, on Twitter afterwards. You know, when he said, you know, keep going, that was for you lot tonight, you know, and all that kind of thing. And like we've said throughout the show, that that was him. That That is him throughout the whole season. So, yeah, to have that moment at Arsenal. City, as somebody's mentioned earlier on, when uh, uh, when Fuso scored, Nona got on the you know got on the mic, you know, nicked it from from Keegan and that kind of thing. You know, Skinner, I think as well, has shown a lot of emotion this season, which is what I love as a manager. You know, a lot of the, when we beat City in the Conte, when we beat Arsenal, he comes right up to us and like you know, fin- fist clench, like come on, kind of thing. And that that to me makes it more likable, and it makes the team more likable as well. As no, I think I tweeted it back in October, November time. Obviously, when Ollie was still around as well. Um, how great is it we've got two likable teams? You know, obviously the men's side has really tailed off this season, but at least with the women's side, you could really say with Skinner there, it's a really really likable group. Um, I, I, I don't know whether you, obviously we were at the Chelsea game. All of us were at the Chelsea game. I've not seen him as emotional at the end of that game. As ever, he was. I thought. I thought he was actually close to tears because of the performance we put in. I mean, the first half we, we, we've we've not talked about games individually, but I thought the first forty-five minutes of that Chelsea game was the best forty-five minutes I'd seen probably in in all all season. I thought we were brilliant, and then we just tailed off. Um, I've not seen him as that emotional. I actually thought there was tears in his eyes, and I think. What he does is he he he, he, fit, he, he runs it, he passes every ball with the team, um, so yeah, yeah, hundred um, percent. Before we wrap up, Mark, I just come to you. If there's anything, yeah. obviously, shout out the supporters club and and things like that, and anything, you know, I'm, I'm hoping you're getting a rest over the summer. But if there's anything, obviously, that, you know, <laughs> across the summer and, and things like that, and anything, obviously, you want to shout out. Yeah. So um, tomorrow. Um, all members are going to be receiving an email about the AGM. We're going to have our annual AGM. Um, that's going to be next month. Um, we are in discussion. We're, we're talking to the club constantly about certain things. Um, and we're moving things forward. The, the one thing um, as, as members that we want is obviously to go back to the club with as much information that this is what people want. This is... Um, um, this is what we, we kind of want to see and, and happen. So, look, we, if you want to become a member, it's dead easy. Just go to www.muwse.co.uk. There's a membership page. There's two membership forms. There's a free membership and there's uh, for worldwide fans and for here as well. And there's also a plus membership, um, which you get, you know, priority booking for away kit days and 10% off merchandise, which um, from next season... Benny and I are going to be sorting out, correct, Benny? Absolutely, lad, absolutely. Um, so we're going to be sorting out new merch. Um, we're going to get other stuff going as well. And it's also, it's always important to have your voice as fans because you need your voices heard. And, and we've got dialogue with the club. Um, so, yeah, join. It's free or you can pay a small fee to be a season uh, member, the plus member. And, yeah, um, we've got constant dialogue. So we've got constant dialogue. We've got things moving forward. And, yeah. De- definitely make sure you go and check all that out it'll be in the uh we'll put it in the description and things like that to the website and all of those kind of things um yeah like, thanks everyone for watching i hope everyone's enjoyed this one obviously we did a a, a zellum one obviously on monday if, you, if you've missed that one obviously a skinner today we'll have a few of these over over the next uh, few weeks as well as our kind of player of the season um i think you know it's, it's getting quite tight in the in the voting towards the top so uh could be quite interesting obviously 
I was going to say something else then. Friday Fans Forum. It's, I, I don't like it, all the Fs. That's on, uh, obviously, back tomorrow, 7 o'clock, and, and Saturday Night Live, obviously, on Saturday as well. Um, but, yeah, hope everyone enjoyed. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. Uh, thanks, Mark, uh, Benny, John. I don't know why. I, it feels weird, John, because you you started it, and now I'm kind of ending this show. But, yeah, thanks, everyone, like for, <laughs> thanks everyone for coming on and for everyone in the comments, and we'll see you all soon.